Y'all see this joint right here? Listen, I'm gonna need y'all to place y'all orders, man. This hoodie fire. Fire, man. Check it out. When you order the when you order the bundle pack, right? When you order the bundle pack, your hoodie will be shipped immediately. The canvas print that goes on your wall will be shipped immediately. And you will be the first to get the CD and the digital download before the album hits streaming platforms. So place your order today, man. It's on. Go to www.themastersrsvp.com. www.themastersrsvp.com. Place your orders now. The pre-order is ready. Master's table. Have a seat at the master's table. We ain't asked for no seat. We went and built up our own. You see, it's rather stable. You got two eyes, two ears, you know the rest. Look, listen, and observe, but also respect. In God we trust, it's obvious. The money ain't the root of all evil, but lack thereof. That's why they deprive you of resources. Why they focus on streams of income, at least three sources. We certified, we solidified. And they say they created hip hop, but all that shit is lies. Cause every element came before the development of what we call it hip hop now. It's all relevant to all the topics we gon' touch on. Spoil alert, as you play this album, ain't no club songs. Boy, that hurt, but this ain't no conscious album. It's just that real shit, that Black God mantra album. I hope y'all feel this. Oh, and write down your questions so that when you come up that you're able to just, you know, present it. Yes, ma'am. Sincere. You are the next person on the stage to ask Mr. Dalton a question. Peace, peace. What's going on? How you doing? We're good, sir. And yourself? Doing great. Appreciate y'all holding the space. Um, Sincere, what's going on, God? King Cam, peace to the God. How you doing, man? I'm blessed, brother. Yes, indeed. And so, yeah, I also want to mention, yeah, we got some uh, 5% of the Nation of Gods and Earths in the building as well, too. Let's let that be known. But um, <clears throat> I want to... Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to touch on um, the part of the conversation about, you know, the DNA and all of that stuff. For me, I don't really see a contradiction from the DNA test results and people saying that they're indigenous to the Americas. Because, as we know, you know what I'm saying, the black man is the original man of the planet Earth. And so we weren't just sitting in one section of the planet Earth, not moving around to see what else was out there. You know what I mean? So even the, uh, the black people who are indigenous to the Americas, they still came from Africa at some point. You know what I'm saying? So the DNA is, is going to be the same, especially if you're talking about us here in the United States versus the people in the Caribbean. I mean, we're kind of made up of the same groups when you look at history. You know what I'm saying? You got the indigenous black people who were already here. You got the Africans who were brought over during the slave trade. Some of the explorers that came over even before that. You know what I'm saying? So our DNA should be the same. We are the same people from a DNA standpoint. We have, may have different cultures and ethnicities, you know, but as far as our our, our physical DNA, yeah, it should be the same. I don't see a contradiction there. But my question to you, brother, um, this is where I get confused about the conversation around um, us being original Hebrews, which, you know, I'm, I'm, that's all fine with me. But to me, it seems like there's a conflation of a theological conversation and a historical conversation. Like, I get confused when people start talking about how we can prove that we're the people that they're talking about in the Bible based on DNA when, you know, when you're talking about the scriptures, you're, you're not talking about history. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about theology. Like some of these characters that are talked about in the, in the Bible are not people that actually live. Like these are, you know what I'm saying, mythological characters. And so where are we getting DNA traced back to Abraham and all of these other people that we can't even prove actually walked on the earth? How does somebody trace their DNA back to a mythological character? I don't mean that with no disrespect, but that's sincerely like what my confusion is. So you can answer that for me. Yeah, so the the Bantu people in Africa, they have oral histories uh, that's not written in the white man's book. The white man didn't teach them this. They already had this history that they once lived in Egypt a long time ago, and they were under oppression by uh, a wicked ruler in that they had one of their own, a leader rose up 
and led them out of Egypt, which in some cases they call it misery, the name for ancient Egypt in their language, in the Bantu African language is misery. And the Hebrew word for Egypt is Mitzrayim. And so they left with a, a leader. He had a staff and they crossed, they crossed over a large body of water and they wandered in the wilderness um, for a long period of time. Uh, and that, you know, they made it to this area uh, and they got to, you know, they got the laws of God, the way that just flips and gov govern their people. And when you look at the Bantu people, the oral history of the Bantu people is from where the people uh, got biblical stories from. Now, with the Greeks, they uh, kept everything exactly as to what the Bantu people went through or not. Uh, we will never know the answer to that question because the Greeks authorized and translated the, the Greek Septuagint. But when we look at the fact that there was a Hebrew language uh, that existed during the time of the Old and Middle Kingdom that you could see in ancient Egypt alongside with the Egyptian hieroglyphics, because you had the Hebrew uh, pictographs alongside of Egyptian hieroglyphics, which were different. And so we know that there were two people living in, in Egypt that had different languages. If they had different languages, then they had somewhat different customs. But when they stayed in Egypt for a long period of time and then left, they have been there for hundreds of years. So now you're a Hebrew uh, staying in Egypt, intermarrying with Egyptian women, um, being around Egyptian people. So naturally, you would learn how to speak the dialect of that land in addition to knowing your mother tongue. Uh, this is this is how we see black people in Africa speaking multiple languages, including their mother tongue and the colonial tongue. Uh, this is how we see Creole languages in Jamaica and Haiti. And we see in America, we've lost all that and speak only the colonial language. Um, but must believe that if, if a Nigerian evil man came here to America, that if he didn't know that much of English, uh, say he had to learn it or say a, a man from Mexico came to America and stayed here, and his children stayed here for 100 years, eventually they would learn how to speak English and obtain the Spanish uh, or the Igbo language. So we see that when the Hebrews left with Moses that they already had knowledge of the traditions and customs of the Egyptians, the pagan deities and gods, the language. And so we look at the Bantu people today from whom we come from had the same DNA like in Ghana and Togo and Benin and Nigeria and the Congo, you'll see that they are keeping traditions and customs that we can read right now in our in our Bible, in the Torah, in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And when you look at their language, you can see in their language, you see the, the functionality of how ancient Hebrew operates in terms of the morphology, the syntax and the lexicon, even down to the lexicon. And that that's something that, that scholars cannot, 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 um, you know, find out why that is because these Bantu people did not have white Jewish people come down to Africa and have them attend Hebrew school. But yet there's Hebrew and Egyptian in their mother tongue and nobody taught them this. It's already been ingrained in their language. And so when you look at all these things and you have to ask yourself, okay, if the Bantu people weren't indigenous to these certain regions and areas in Africa and the African pygmies and if the Khoisan Bushmen people said that we were here first and the Bantu people came later from the north well what part of the north are they talking about? Well you, if you follow the Nile River from Egypt you will see that the Bantu people migrated from Egypt to eventually get to where they are today and the reason why there's so many books on the Hebrewisms of Africa or the children of Israel are in Africa. And the reason why so many Jewish organizations like Kurano are always going into Nigeria, to Rwanda, to Uganda, to Zimbabwe, to South Africa, to Ethiopia, to, to Ghana, to Benin, to Togo, to Senegal, Gambia, it's because they know where the original Israelites are dwell at to this day so when we look at a people a people have a language if they have a language they used to have a script script scripts can change over time the somalians don't use the egyptian script anymore even though they speak it they have it in their language they, they write using the arabic script or the latin script 
the Ebos don't use their original script no more because they write in the Latin English script. Most all Africans today in South Africa, in, in Southern sub saharan Africa, and even West Africa and Central Africa, they're going to write using the Latin script or the English script, even if they speak French or Portuguese or their mother tongue. So we have to understand that in addition to this language, they have oral histories that talk about where they come from. And in addition to that, they have traditions and customs which make up culture. And all these things we can see reflecting in the Old Testament with the Israelites of the Bible. So we can we can say we don't believe in the Bible, it's all made up. But the, at the end of the day, <laughs> we see that there's a people <clears throat> called the Israelites that were given commandments uh, and, and laws and statutes religious, ceremonial, dietary, moral, all types of facets of society that they are supposed to follow. And it's different than the Sumerians, it's different than the people in India, it's different than people in China, different people in Europe, it's different people um, in ancient Egypt or ancient Kush, Sudan. It's the same as the ancient Israelites' traditions and customs. So the ancient Israelites' traditions and customs in the Bible, which many people say, we don't believe it. It existed. It's not real. It's fictional. It's made up. Well, they can say that all day long, but in the Torah, in the first five books of the Bible, you will see the same exact traditions and customs that the Israelites practice being practiced right now in sub-Saharan Africa with the Bantu people who have the same DNA as us. So who else could they be other than the Israelites of the Bible? Yes, sir. Um, the next person on stage.